But hello, darling. This is Tula, one of my favorite plant shops in Brooklyn. And honey, <laughs> they have a lot of plants. But with so many green girls to choose from, it can be hard to know where to start. I'm gonna walk you through almost every plant in this store and show you how I shop for the perfect green girl and how you can too. All right, darling, so one of the first things that I enjoy doing before I prance around and enjoy the green girls galore of the plant shop is to figure out how the green girls are situated throughout the space. Now, Tula, one of my favorite shops, has two main sections. There's the tropical section, and then there's the arid section. Something that I really enjoy is when plant shops situate their green girls based on their lighting needs. You may have a plant shop that has all of their green girls that really enjoy bright light towards the front of their store, where they're getting all that direct light. And then as we go towards the back, there are green girls that can withstand low light condition. And when I say low light, that does not mean no light. All green girls need an amount of light in order to self-sustain themselves through that wonderful process called what? Photosynthesis, okay? So Queen, let's prance around and see the variety of green girls we have before us. These are queens that really, really enjoy bright light. We have the infamous Begonia Maculata, one of my favorite queens with her little polka dot sensation. This is another begonia. We have some uh, Triskentias. We have some Hoyas. We have the Philodendron Birkin, and I'm not talking about the bag, okay? These queens do enjoy a good amount of bright light. And when it comes to watering, I find that philodendrons do enjoy a nice aerated soil mixture. One of the easiest things to do when you're watering your green girls is just to put your finger in two inches and just test the moisture around the soil. You don't wanna just tap the top soil, you really wanna make sure that you're checking the soil near the root. One of the beautiful things about plant shops is that they're gonna guide you through the experience. If you look here, it says what? Pet safe. There are a lot of green girls that are toxic for small children and for a pet. You just wanna make sure that if you do have little furry creatures or little humans running around, that you're investing in bringing in pet safe or pet friendly green girls into your space. One of the best things that you can do before deciding which green girls you want to put in your shopping bag and take back home is to do an environmental assessment of your space. When it comes to lighting situations, you have basic four directions. So you have north facing, which really gets more indirect, bright, ambient light. You have south facing windows, which are often highly sought after by plant parents because of the consistent amount of light. You have east-facing windows which get that soft morning light. By mid-afternoon, the sun is going into the west-facing windows and then going into sunset. What I typically do is that I whip up my Compass app it's free, it's on your phone, very accessible, and I'll point it in the direction of the windows just to get an idea of the sunlight situation that I'm working with. So let's do some comparisons. You have plants like the banana plant, and then you have uh, green girls like this beautiful asparagus fern. When it comes to different lighting needs, I think this is a good example of a green girl that can withstand more direct light as compared to more delicate plants that may more easily experience sunburn. When folks say indirect light, what they really mean is filtered ambient light. So imagine a very, very bright room, but the sun is not shining directly onto this particular green girl. Then you have one of my favorite, which is the snake plant, which comes in over 70 different varieties. One of the best air purifiers, according to NASA. One of the things that I really enjoy doing when I'm trying to, you know, experiment with my plant parent skills is that I'll buy two of the same plant and I'll place them at different parts of my apartment that may have different lighting conditions and see how they fare. And then once you notice that there's a green girl that is doing much better, then you may wanna bring that other green girl and pot her in the same pot so that she can thrive as well. 
We are now at one of my favorite little spots and it's this lovely, lovely, lovely shower. I really enjoyed the tiles. Right beside me, we have the infamous Monstera Deliciosa. She has her own social media day, hashtag Monstera Monday. One of the beautiful things that some folks may not necessarily know is that it's actually a climbing vine that utilize their area roots, which is these beautiful things right here, to latch on to any surfaces that they may be near. So it could be a tree, it could be a wall, any solid surface, these queens will grow up. What you can do is invest in a moss pole or a totem pole. These are perfect for allowing any epiphytic queens that enjoy growing upward, whether it's a pothos or a monstera. These are the perfect little tools that we can utilize to mimic the natural habitat of our green girls. You may not want your green girl growing up your wall. You want that security deposit back, right? So there are a variety of tropical plants right here. We have a beautiful palm, and I find that palms tend to enjoy a good amount of light as well as humidity. We have a beautiful golden pothos right here. While they are often found in hanging planters, one of the best things that you can do for a pothos is to let her climb. You have this vine right here, and the leaves are getting smaller as they are trailing down as compared to these larger leaves that are trailing up. If you do have the opportunity to do like a moss pole or a totem pole situation for the pothos, it's an absolute must, darling. Something that I really enjoy doing is figuring out what are the natural habitats and what do they look like out in the wild so that I can try to mimic that when I bring them into my home. Some other beautiful queens that we have before us is the beautiful bird of paradise. She has some new growth realness, which we absolutely love and adore. And I find that once this leaf kind of goes up a little bit larger, something that you can do is take a wet sponge or wet cloth and kind of go down that new leaf to help her unfurl. Cute little trick, it works in like a matter of hours. We have the beautiful money tree, which symbolizes wealth, good fortune, all that good stuff. It said that there was a, a plant parent who had this particular plant and realized that it was really easy to grow. And so kind of started his own business and uh, named the tree the money tree because he basically propagated a plant and made tons of money. All right, so now we are in the arid section of Tula, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite parts of this plant shop. We have a variety of succulents, cacti, euphorbias, all those wonderful, hardy, resilient queens. These queens live in environments that are often susceptible to droughts. They need to make sure that they can hold on to as much water as possible, and they do it in their leaves. When it comes to watering our cacti, succulents, and euphorbia, you wanna make sure that you are watering them fully. And so just because they are very good at withstanding drought and you don't need to water them as often as you do when it comes to tropical green girls, that doesn't mean that you're just giving them a trickle of water. That's actually something that's really bad for our green girls because you're forcing the roots to stretch themselves to find that moisture. And so what I tend to do with any succulents or cacti or euphorbia that I have in my plant fam is that I space out the watering make sure that the soil is completely dried out before giving them another drink. And when I do water them, I am soaking them completely and making sure the water is touching all parts of that soil. There are a variety of reasons that a plant may be more expensive as compared to her sisters in the store. Some of the factors could be the access that growers have to that particular plant. If there's limited access, that means that the price point is gonna be a little bit higher. It could mean that the plant is a slow grower. That means that it's gonna take a little bit more time for that plant shop to have access to that particular plant. When it comes to social media, there could be a green girl that is extremely popular that could actually raise the price point up 
if folks are attracted and are actively seeking out that green girl. When it comes to growing your plant fam, you don't necessarily need rare plant. It's more about matching that green girl to what you can provide as a plant parent and what your space can provide. I love plants like this beautiful dinosaur back, but I also love the basic green girl, the basic potho, snake plant, ZZ plant, rubber tree. Those green girls are as equally beautiful as this particular queen that could be a little bit harder to find. The next time you are perusing the green girls galore of your local plant shop, make sure you know your space. Make sure you know the layout of the plant shop. Make sure you do your research on the green girls that catches your eye. And with those combinations of strategies and technique, you'll find the perfect green girl for you. I've decided to pick up this particular green girl. She is known as the well fin snake plant because of the massiveness of her beautiful leaves. One of the reasons that I'm choosing this queen is because I know that snake plants do very, very well with me. It's not all about welcoming new green girls into your space, the ones that you don't necessarily have. It's knowing the kind of plant parent you are and welcoming the green girls that you know are gonna thrive with you. This queen is growing in a very unique way. That's one of the things that I look for when I'm bringing a new plant into my home. How is she growing? How is she different? But how is she similar to the other queens that I know I can care for? I have the perfect little spot, all dedicated to her lusciousness and her growth. And honey, she's excited.